In medieval maps, the edge of the explored world was also the edge of knowledge. And in true horror vacui style, these voids were filled with bizarre megafauna, dragons, leviathans, and sea monsters. The phrase, here be dragons, came to represent this need to populate the unknown with the fantastical. This exhibition explores this enduring legacy through the work of four contemporary artists. Olivia Kemp's ink drawings stem from a stream of consciousness mark making that unfolds into imaginary landscapes. This show features a monumental new drawing, all at sea, an unending archipelago loosely based on Cranach's hunt at the castle of Torgau at the Prado in Madrid. Olivia adapts this into a collection of islands studded by buildings from Nantucket and Cape Cod, threaded together like a maritime labyrinth. Nantucket was the home of Captain Ahab's ship, the Pequod, in the quintessential leviathan hunt, Moby Dick. This imagined land thus becomes the native setting for adventures into the unknown that are as much psychological as physical. Smaller accompanying works are inspired by Northern Renaissance painters, such as Cornelis van Dalem, who use mountains and rocks to suggest the fragility of civilization and the raw power of nature. Olivia's works create similar scenes with an effusion of detail and colonize them with unassuming structures that echo her own house in the Swedish countryside. Cherry Smith's paintings examine animals as companions in adventures both real and imagined, presenting dreamlike scenes where the animal world recovers some of the symbolic power of the medieval bestiary. Life Licker presents a ghost-like woman being attended and healed by a hound, referring to the medieval belief in the curative powers of a dog's licking. A pair of walkers step on a snake that springs up to take their tongues. In a painting echoing Tobias and the Angel in London's National Gallery, bats do the same to another pair of nighttime ramblers, such as in this painting, Echo. Bats appear frequently as agents of the unknown in Cherry's work. In this painting, Carried Away, bats replace angels to abduct a surprised artist. In a composition inspired by angels lifting the body of St. Catherine to Mount Sinai, in Frankfurt's Stadel Museum. In this painting, The Touching, a mass of Gothic hands look to feel an amorphous flitter mouse. Throughout Cherry's paintings, touch is important, the haptic experience of the animal other, petting as a source of pleasure. Caroline Smith's ceramic sculptures depict the mythological beasts and archetypes that inhabit the unconscious, treading the fine line between fascination and horror. A life-sized bloodhound with razor-sharp teeth sits waiting for visitors. His gold-flecked eyes glint as his coat glistens lush glazes. An oversized foot relic appears as the bejeweled body part of a colossus, encrusted like a treasure trove. This work was made for an exhibition at Great St. Bart's Church in London, inspired by the tale of St. Bartholomew's foot being stolen. And it also references many eccentric reliquies, such as this piece at the Swiss National Museum. Alongside is a hairy Mary Magdalene, inspired by the Christian story of how, in later life, Mary Magdalene lived as a hermit covered in hair in the wilderness. Caroline's Mary looks almost as much animal as human and stares into a pool like Narcissus. These constitute just some of the magical and fearsome entities that inhabit the shadowy corners of the imagination. Mark Connolly's paintings explore the grand themes of good and evil and the narratives that underpin the eternal battle. The paintings in this exhibition look specifically at the dragon as the inhabitant of a magical land which the hero must confront as part of his quest. 
One painting presents the dragon embedded in his domain, flapping his wings beneath moonlight as a waterfall flows beyond. The largest work depicts the moment of confrontation, a diminutive lone knight, reminiscent of St. George, so popular in Renaissance painting, facing a gigantic triple-headed fiend in a hyper-dramatized battle. A third painting sees the knight conquering the dragon, wrangling it into submission, a scene that echoes centuries-old Christian imagery of St. Michael, such as this painting in the Cathedral of Salamanca in Spain. Through playful execution, Mark's painting suggests how the dragon, as imagined menace, is precisely that, a narrative creation that expands to occupy all available imaginative space, much as they occupied the entirety of the unknown world in medieval cartography.